All right, let the timer go past a little bit. Sure, here we go, Mitch. Let me turn down the music. Mitch, good morning. How you doing, brother? Good morning, man. How's it going? Oh man, still trying to, still trying to wake up. Wake my my coffee to kick in. <laughs> yeah. I already I already had two cups, and I still can't get get it moving uh, today. Man, I swear the older I get, man, the, the I feel like an old car, man, trying to trying to jump start. Yep. <laughs> it's harder and harder. I know that up. feeling well. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, let me turn on the sound here. A little multitasking. Down. So uh, we have six people in here. Is that what it's show showing me? Yes, yeah, total six right now. Let's go fluctuate mm -hmm. as we as we get going. Um, yeah. So good morning, appliance repair community, Jacob. Good morning. Thank you for your time. Thank you for joining. Um, so, uh, man, nice and early. You know, I know services usually get way earlier than we are, but you know, this gives us an opportunity to to get the uh, get everything going, get your uh, um, get your day started with learning something. Uh, anytime you're sitting in a class or you're, you're sitting there absorbing information, you're going to learn something. I don't care if you're doing this for five days or for five years or 50 years. Uh, it's something to be learned. So uh, with that said, this is the beginning of our series, Appliance Repair 101, which Mitch Williams. Now, my name is Reggie Williams. That's Mitch. Yes, Yes, this is no secret to y'all. We are twin brothers. <laughs> That's the last names. <laughs> My brother from another mother. That's right. <laughs> um, and so the, the whole point of this series, right, is to uh, get back to blocking and tackling, right? The basics, right? Uh, so I don't know, I think I start bringing props with me. Uh, so Lou Holtz, right? It, Mitch, you know, you know who Lou Holtz is, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Legendary football coach. And so there was a rumor that uh, when he started every training camp, right, the new training camp of the season, uh, you have all the freshmen in, you have the seniors in, uh, even, you know, the veterans. And he started every training camp holding a football in his hand and saying, gentlemen, this is a football. Right. Started with the basics, started with the, the you know, the, the first steps uh, and worked up from there. Right. No matter how experienced you are. So uh, appliance repair one on one and in, in our industry, too, I think we're, we're kind of starved uh, for education. Right. Because HVAC kind of gets all the, the glory uh, and appliance repair kind of is, is, is almost like a stepchild. Right. <laughs> so we're here to change that. Ain't that right, Mitch? Yes. <laughs> yes. We're here to make it happen. And so uh, we started this series off with a, a microwave repair, right? Uh, and microwave repair is, I think, one of those mysteries, right? Because uh, so I know when I started <clears throat> when I started doing appliance repair, I started with washers and dryers, and I actually started with wash machines. Thinking like, oh, dryers are way too complicated. They're you need electric electrician's license. And now, you know, now I found out, man, I probably should have started with dryers. They were actually that's the easiest thing to fix. Um, and Mike, but the only thing with microwaves, I think we don't have that same progression because you're thinking about you hear about that that, that Megatron, right? <laughs> the Magnetron, and you're like, oh, you know, you hear the horror stories. It's like, you know, what? I'm gonna stay away from microwaves. Uh, and so with this this curriculum here is to debunk some of that uh actually educate you uh and again as, as always it's free uh thanks to encompass because you know this is a compass way of giving back to our customers uh you know a lot of suppliers are basically just kind of hey buy parts from us we're great buy parts right yeah. well we give back right the, the success of our customers means the success of encompass right uh y'all know the saying the more you learn, the more you earn, right? So, and that, so not only Mitch. So here's the thing, right? I, I feel like now I'm starting to feel like a uh, uh, one of those those infomercials, nine nineteen ninety nine. <laughs> wait, there's more. So, wait, there's more, but it's free, right? Wait, there's more, and 
let's go to let me see if I still got my soundboard. Oh, you can't really hear it that much that good. Lean on your rep. You hear that? Lean on your rep. Mm -hmm. my soundboard up. Lean it's a little low. My voice. All right, so let's do it. Let's go to screen share kung. I call screen screen share kung fu, Mitch. And as I find the screen. Do, 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 do. I'm gonna do Windows. Here we go. Boom. So, uh, again, th these trainings are free thanks to our sponsors, and one of our sponsors is the Easy Stock app. The Easy Stock app is a vehicle, a uh, vehicle <laughs> inventory management app. It can't manage a vehicle, but it can manage the inventory. So here's the magic, Mitch. So, you, you know, we all have service trucks and there's parts that's all over the place, a complete clutter, right? Well, the Easy Stock app won't, do, won't fix that. <laughs> it, it won't organize, but it'll let you know the part is in that pile somewhere, <laughs> right? So it's yep. up to you to actually organize your truck. Uh, but the Easy Stock app is a, just an inventory management app. Uh, so it's great if you have multi-text or, Hey, if you're a lone wolf, right? You got one truck, you can still use easy stock because now you know what inventory is on your truck and what inventory you got back home in the garage, right? Or the storage unit, or heart, whatever, how you're operating, right? The shed, um, mm -hmm. you know, the, the basement, the attic, wherever, you, wherever you're keeping your spare part. Uh, and so with easy stock, you go in. You scan all your parts inventory, regardless of who, who who you bought it from, right? I mean, obviously you should buy all your parts from Encompass. What mad mad person wouldn't? <laughs> but if for some reason you made a, a huge mistake and bought a part somewhere else, uh, you can still scan that in Easy Stock, right? Um, and as you see in the description, you can so your home can be a truck, and then your truck can be a truck, right? Mm -hmm. uh, or let's say you have three or four technicians. So you have Reggie's appliance repair and you got Mitch's appliance repair, right? Uh, and Mitch is my buddy. I can go on Easy Stock and see, you know, it, it, if Mitch has the part I need, I can give Mitch a call. Uh, or if we work for the same company, I say I can look and see. Easy Stock will tell me, hey, you don't have the part on your truck, but Mitch, part uh, truck two, has it in stock. Uh, it's a great app. Um, you scan the part, and as you see, it automatically populates, uh, enters the information in for you, uh, lets you know how many you have. You scan in and scan out. It doesn't require any type of, you know, being any type of technological whiz. Uh, so even people, even the person, a person that is the most anti-technology <laughs> can use this app. Um, and wait, there's more, right? <laughs> Like the infomercial. Wait, there's more. It's free. So Easy Stock is a nice app. So basically, all you have to do is go to your app store, wherever you get your apps, your Android or if you have Apple, uh, go to your app store and look up Easy Stock. And just make sure you look for this symbol, right? This logo. Because there's a couple other uh, couple other companies called uh, with it with that it called Easy Stock for other reasons, other other uh um, man, it, it, my coffee ain't kicked in. I got <laughs> those are my words. Uh, you know, so so it's other manufacturer, uh, other uh, companies that have that that symbol. So uh, that has Easy Stock in the name. So just look for th this brand when you go to your app store. All right, man, I was having a brain seizure there. <laughs> Glad I go over that one. All right, next, that's Easy Stock. Uh, my information is scrolling beneath, so if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, for those who do not know me, my name is Reggie Williams. I am your Encompass rep. Uh, so my job is to visit you find folks in the appliance repair community. Uh, I visit at least 30 of you a week face-to-face. -face. Uh, other than that, I find mediums such as this training, uh, and other events and things that we have to uh, communicate with you also. Um, but hey, you can reach out to me too. My information is scrolling below. I'm available always. That phone number, you can text me, um, you can email me, or you can pick up the phone and give, give your boy a call. 
Um, if you have any questions, uh, I was in the appliance repair community uh, business for 10 years. Uh, started off as a washer dryer flipper uh, and then did COD calls. And then uh, the greatest opportunity the bestowed appliance repair technician, other than train, being a trainer, <laughs> uh, was my opportunity with Encompass. Uh, I say, you know, joining Encompass is almost like having a, uh, a venture capitalist come in and back you and, and help you grow, right? And so I feel like, you know, I always tell people, I, I feel like Super Mario, we ate a mushroom and he grew. Uh, so Encompass has done that for me and extended the reach, uh, my reach uh, to the appliance community. And this training is one is, is, is one of those examples. Um, so enough about me. Hey, Mitch, what about you? <laughs> Mitch, well, where do you come from? Who are you? Tell, tell me. You. I've, I've been in this business since about 1978. Um, I started I started right as I got out of high school. Um, I didn't want to go to college. My dad, my dad tried to make me go to college. That worked for about one quarter and when my grades came in he told me you don't need to be going to college and need to be finding me a job mm -hmm. so that's what i started doing was appliance repair um and i i worked for for several companies that everybody's heard of and i've worked for a couple of independents um if you're in Mar if you were in marietta georgia in 1978 the company that i worked for was brian service we were a Whirlpool tuck care service, so we did a lot of Whirlpool products. We also did uh, vending machines, commercial ice makers, um, and commercial microwaves. Uh, we, we had about, uh, about 12 employees, including the, the personnel there. Um, from there, I went to the, the company for appliance repair that nobody ever knows is was a defunct Circuit City. Um, I worked there for a couple of years. Then I went to, to Best Buy, and I worked at Best Buy for, oh, about two years. And then um, one of the guys came around with training and, and said, hey, I think you'd be a really good trainer. And I was like, well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. Uh, I'm not so sure. And the guy goes, well, here, if you decide you want a, a training job, you come and see me. So I did, and my life has now been all about training. And I have trained both appliance repair, appliance installation. I have, I have trained here uh, just recently on... Um, on, on doing audits and, and seeing where the the weak the weak link was um, with appliance companies um, and and trying to get them back on track and get them to um, to, to raise their game. Um, so I like I said I've been in this business a very long time and I I really love this business. Um, I love being a trainer. Um, it, it, like my, like I tell my dad now, if there was one thing that I could do, I'm already doing it that, right. that I, that I'd love to do. And that's, that's being a trainer. Um, there's a lot of new guys out there. Um, they are very, uh, unlike my, my 12 year old son, they're very respectful. They're very, <laughs> uh, they listen well. They, and that's what this, this program is all about. Um, you know, as you can, you can't really see behind me, but it says appliance training innovation. And then, you know, I just want, I want this truck, this series to be the best series that you can, you can, you can learn and, and make things better. Um, so today is, is basic microwave training. So, like I said, this is basic. So, um, hey, man, before you go too far, uh, I think the elephant in the room, the one question everybody's asking, you mentioned Best Buy. Do you still get the discount? And can you no. hook us up? 
<laughs> no. no, oh man. <laughs> and, and let me tell you, the funny part is whenever I worked for Best Buy, one of the agreements that I had was that I got a um, hundred shares of Best Buy stock wow. every two years. What? You still got it? No. Oh man. Okay. Whenever I left, they took it. So no way. Well, they didn't take it. They gave me they I they could... took the stock and then gave me the the value of the stock. Oh, that's no fun. That so, at that time it was like, you got to remember, at that time stock was trading for about seven dollars a share. Yeah, it's not yeah like yeah. it was. Um, yeah, Best Buy is strong. Yeah. So, uh, go ahead. Oh, so I, I've got a, uh, a a special guest that just walked in. Oh, scoot on over, brother. You can't hear y'all, but you can hear him. So. Special guest just got walked into the buildings. Uh, this is Corey. So, if you are on the West Coast, he is your rep. I say lean on your rep, lean on Corey. He is uh, our, our West Coast rep. Uh, tell me how to reach him, man. Yeah, my number is 714 851 5514. If you need anything, and that's C Gibson and Compass.com. Yeah, I hear it. So I'll put that in the description. Uh, so if you're on the West Coast, so like I said, uh, the sun never sets on the Encompass Empire. <laughs> We're everywhere. We'll get we'll get to you. So with that said, I'm gonna stop yapping because we got like the numbers are building and we are 15 minutes in, and I think they're ready to learn something, Mitch. Okay. I, I think we got some folks in there uh, that's ready to, to order some Megatrons. <laughs> Did I even say that right? Megatrons? Is that how you pronounce it? Magnetron? Magnetrons. Mega say I'm a Transformers fan. So yeah. I was gonna say you're a Transformers is, fan. I can yeah, tell that. That that just rolls right off my lips, man. Uh so uh Magnetron, you can buy that at encompass.com. And if you need a compass account, I'll leave a link in the description too. All right, with that said, I'm out of here. Well, I'm not out of here. I'm here, but Mitch, it's all you, brother. All right. I'm not real sure. There we go. Okay. So, so guys, like I said, this is basic microwave training. So what, what, what is in one of the things that, that we, that I ask everybody is, you know, what are the benefits of a microwave? Number, uh, out of these, uh, four answers, one is, one is wrong. Uh, you can cook food. You can reheat food, you can pop popcorn, but please never dry off an animal in the microwave. Um, I, I actually, whenever I was uh, 14 years old, I had a job and it was at a company that's no longer in business called Burger Shop. And one of the owner's daughters decided that she wanted to uh, throw some stuff in the microwave and it was, it was not a good sight. Um, so I'm going to leave it like that up. Oh, there you go. There's, there's your rep in the West coast. See Gibson at encompass.com. So number one, how does a microwave work? Well, <coughs> as you can tell, you, you plug the microwave in, you set you set everything. The the you have to a lot of the new microwaves require you to set the the um, the clock and and everything else. But everything a lot a lot of it you can just plug whatever you want into the into the um, into the into the pa control pad. The control pad has everything from reheat to uh, defrost to making popcorn, there's all kinds of things on the control pad. So what you do is you input what you what you want, you open the door, you put your whatever it is that you want to do, um, like this is a potato, um, you go ahead and, and close the door, either input your time, if, it's, if you're defrosting something, 
you're going to have to put in how much weight it is and all of that. And then you're going to hit the start button. So as soon as you hit that start button, the control pad tells the, um, tells the, the magnet, the, um, transformer, Hey, we need to, we need to do this. The transformer then goes and sends information over to the, over to the, um, uh, <coughs> capacitor excuse me which goes and sends information to the magnetron the magnetron fires you get you get a waveguide with a stirrer motor the waveguide covers the magnetron so that you don't have uh, par particles getting into the magnetron and destroying it once it passes that you're going to go to the store it has a stirrer motor you're going to, that stirrer, that stirrer is going to then dispense the microwaves around and you, uh, you're cooking with gas as the old saying goes. Um, the que one of the questions that, that people get all the time is, can I cook a microwave and I mean, an egg in the microwave? Well, the answer is yes, you can cook them an egg in the microwave, but. You have to you have to take the egg out of the shell. Um, you can then take the egg out of the shell, put it in a bowl, stir it up, put it in the microwave, put a cover on the top, and and uh, fire fire it off. And about a minute later, you have you have an egg. Is it the? It's not. It's not to me. It's not the best way to get make an egg. Uh, I'm still the old school guy, and I like it on the stove, but. If you're in a hurry, this is a great way to make an egg. Um, so what happens if I don't take the egg out of the shell? Well, the next slide is going to tell you. If you. As you can see, this is what happens when you put a put an egg in a microwave in the shell. You get a big mess. Why do you get the big mess? Well, the water inside the egg itself heats up so rapidly that it turns to steam. But the steam can't go anywhere. So it just expands and expands. The pressure builds up so much that the egg the egg explodes. Um, the, the egg always... The egg always... The egg structure... Um, is a has a thin membrane inside the egg. That's the reason. Whenever I told you, yeah, you can you can cook an egg in the microwave, but you gotta you gotta stir it up because it. If you cook a little bit, you know that that egg has has a um. <coughs> excuse me, a thin membrane that kind of holds it together. Whenever you crack that egg open and it hits the pan, it'll. That's what breaks that. Um, membrane. Okay, so let's go back to the to the. What do I need to do whenever I'm gonna make? Whenever I'm gonna work on a microwave, what tools do I need to work on the microwave? Okay, you're gonna have to have a meter. Do, do you have to have a specialized pe a meter? Yes, you have to have one at least one that will will check capacitance. Um, so you, you can do that with either just a multimeter or you can buy one that has an amp probe. Um, it doesn't matter. It, it's, it's up to you. If I'm just buying one meter, because meters are expensive, you can go anywhere from, from, you know, basically $25. I wouldn't get one that's $5. Um, you can get one for like $25 or you can go all the way up to, you know, thousands of dollars for a meter. Um, it's just a matter of what do you want to check? One of the other thing is you're going to need hand tools. Um, like I said, I'm an, I'm an old guy. The first thing that my old, my very first boss told me was that if he caught me using a drill, he would fire me. He said, you need to use your hand tools. That's what, that's what they're made for. Um, 
why do you use a hand tool instead of a instead of a drill? A lot of people don't know how to use a drill. I mean, we may end up having to do a, a class on how to use the proper u- use of a drill. Uh, most people want to crank it all the way up to drill. That's not how you work use a drill, unless you're actually drilling into something. Um, you need you need a you need a drill that you can you can turn the key, the chuck key and so that you stop it so that you don't over over tighten things. There's nothing worse. I'll tell you a perfect example. <laughs> <clears throat> so I went to the I went to the tire shop. They they pulled the tires. They rotated my tires. I started out and I got um, I got about halfway to where I was going and the thing quit. I mean, I had a tire that blew out. So I get out and I I try I try to um, I get everything done. I'm ready. I'm on sitting on the side of the road. And I can't get the I cannot get the um, the lug nut off. The guy had tightened the thing so tight that I couldn't get the lug nut off. Well, you have the same problem whenever you're you're doing stuff with a with a uh, a microwave. If you over tighten that, you can do one of two things: you can strip the screw out, or you can make it so hot, tight that the next guy going in can't get the screw out, and then then he spends ten minutes trying to get it out. Okay, um, so that's the reason my boss always wanted um, hand tools. If you use a drill, please use it properly. Do not turn it on <coughs> all the way up to to where you drill. You need to set it. I usually start at if I'm going to do it, I start at like five, and then I because I the drill that I have, I have like four different drill drills, and they each have a different you know it says it says four on the on the bit on the um on the chuck but it it's a different every chuck is different so please be careful about your drill no the other thing is <clears throat> and i forgot to put it on here you will you actually need a excuse me you actually need a specialized bit um let me see if i can Get this to t- come up. Uh, edit. Nope, it won't let me. Won't let me get it. But there is a specialized bit for doing microwaves. Um, I tried to put it on here, but it wouldn't let me. It was a. Uh, it was copyrighted, so I couldn't get it on there. But if you look at the back of a micro, back of a microwave, there is a uh, Torx head bit. That tuck Torx head bit actually has a little pin in the very center of it. Um, you That's why you need a specialized bit. So make sure that you have one of those whenever you're taking the, taking the cover off the microwave. You're going to need a microwave leak detector. The, the, one of the things that, that nobody ever does that they're supposed to do, and we're going to get into it a little bit later, is to make sure that there there are no microwaves going out um, from the from the cabinet cabinet of the of the microwave itself. The other thing you're going to need is a nine volt battery, um, and we'll get into the nine volt battery whenever we get down to the ne- to the next section. Okay, so let's talk about meter types. We already said about meter types. So the the one on your left is just your regular, um, your regular old multimeter. Um, the one thing you want to make sure of is that you can check a capacitor. This one does. Um, this one is about I think this is like twenty nine dollars. Then you have your <coughs> excuse me. Then you have your um, your amp pro. If I'm going to buy one meter and I'm just going to buy one meter. I would I would have I would probably buy the amp pro because you can do the every everything on the multimeter just about that you can do on the amp pro. Um and the amp probe allows you to if you're doing any refrigeration, you uh you can actually check uh the the amperage 
whenever you, you're you doing that. So, the next thing, hand tools. You need a good set of hand tools. And this is just an example here on the left. It's just one that I picked out. You know, you need, on uh, working on a microwave, you're going to need a, <coughs> a, a screwdriver, um, both Phillips and, and straight. You're going to need a, a good set of, of hand uh, pliers that have um, insulation on the hands because when you go to discharge a capacitor, I've seen people use, uh, you, I've seen people use two screwdrivers. I don't prefer that way. I prefer, I prefer to use it whenever I'm, I'm using a set of pliers and I can check it with a set of needle nose pliers. Now, those of you that go into customers' houses, you have got to have something to protect the counter. If you don't, you're going to, that's the first thing you're going to learn. Your boss is going to call you and go, Hey, listen, I got a call from Mrs. Jones. <coughs> I, Mrs. Jones said you scratched her countertop. Well, if you don't take a picture of that countertop before you do anything, whenever you get back, you got nothing to, to say, well, Miss Jones is, is incorrect. She, she, um, I, here's the picture of the countertop. Um, I actually put two, I put my tools on a, on a little mat so that I didn't get damage any, anything for her. So I always tell my, used to always tell my techs, whatever you do, protect the customer's product and their, 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 their countertops. Um, because if you get into a, um, a countertop that has granite and you scratched the granite, that is not a cheap fix. Um, hey, Reggie, I'm looking at comments and I'm seeing seven. Is there anything that we need to address? Let's see. Uh, uh. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm looking. Okay. All right. So I don't see anything right now. So here's your cordless drills. Cordless drills are just like, just like hand tools. Sorry, man. I was talking. I guess you can't even hear me. That's all right. <laughs> yeah. Um, I said. So this is what this is the latest comment we've got. Uh, shout out. So yeah, feel free to, to, to add comments in the uh, comment section, everyone. Yep. Uh, that's my comment based on everything you just said. That's, that's a kind of a summary. Exactly. Cover your automobiles with good insurance. <laughs> exactly. That's what that stands for. <laughs> uh, you, are, you have to you have to abide by the CMA principle at all times. Yes. Because if uh, you don't do it, nobody ex nobody else will. Right, right, right. So the the drill on the left is your basic twenty nine dollar uh, drill from. Uh, Oh crud! I can't even think about it. They're the red, the the orange handles. Uh, I have one of those, but it's not right here with me. Um, then you have the Milwaukee that's got the brushless. The there they don't, which is really great if you're going to work on something that <coughs> might have a, a spark. Uh, so you kind of I started with with the the twenty nine dollar drill. And I've just now worked up to the nine hundred dollar drill because on the R the R six hundred you have to have something that's sparkless. Um. So here's here is the question that I get all the time, and guys tell me, oh, you know what? I don't ever check it. Well, we're talking about this. The CMA process, this is the CMA process. One of the things is it will tell you, yes, you have to. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, you have to actually um, be do the microwave leak check before you give it back to the customer. 
once you do that, you're saying, Miss Jones, everything is working properly. Um, so everything should be fine. Okay, does anybody have any questions right now? If you do, raise your hand. My hand is raised. <laughs> okay. I got the advantage of popping in on the screen. Let me see you can see court. Damn. Uh, well, first thing that catches my attention uh, is uh, a leaking microwave. Yep. So my first thought is like radiation, my eyes popping out of my skull. Yep. Like, what's the... <laughs> what's well, the number about? one thing that would actually happen to you is you'd become sterile. Oh, no, we can't have that. Yes. Lord said, be fruitful and populate the earth. Do not use your microwave. <laughs> so. What? So, okay, so this tool, um, so how do you go about checking, I guess, for leak? Okay, what you do is you would turn this tool on, okay? I would, you would um, fire the microwave up. What does cam mean? Yeah, the question we got. I'm sorry, what? Feel free to answer mine first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Applying thing, give me more clarification on what, what, what do you, uh, on, your, on your question. Okay, um, so what you would do is you would you would fire the microwave up like you were like you were checking it to make sure that you got heat. You take this tool and you go around the outside of the microwave, especially around the door area, because if there's a leak, usually it's somewhere around the door. I have seen them where a technician has gone out, replaced the magnetron, whenever he actually put the magnetron back into place, he didn't seat it properly, and it leaked. My, the microwaves were leaking from the magnetron area. So after the cut, you can if you can do this with the cover off, we can do it with the cover on. I love to do it with, if I'm finishing up, I go ahead and check it with the cover off. So that way I can go around the area because it it, see, it looks for microwave leakage. And as wow. you look at as you look at the um, the display, it will tell you exactly how much leakage you're gonna you get. Um, 0.5 is okay. You get much over 0.5, you need to start worrying about is it is it leaking. <laughs> Well, I tell you that knowledge of that nugget right there is worth the whole class. <laughs> I didn't even know leaking microwaves was a thing. Yes. Uh, yeah. And if so. you look, this is this is actual from um, this is actual the the CR the twenty one CR um, the twenty one CR ten thirty dash ten microwave ovens. This actually came from um, one of the law firms that deals with this. So you need to be very careful with it. I mean, and it, a lot of this is, is is just simple stuff. Do not operate the, the oven with, with the door open. Well, you can't operate the ever oven with the door open unless you jimmy it. And you should never jimmy anything. Um, I had a I had a, a technician that that jumped out a lid switch because the customer said she had uh, you know thirty loads of clothes to do. Well, the problem is if you do that, uh, if she opens the door to the to the washing machine and it's in the spin cycle, you can have a real problem if the customer reaches in. So what, uh, what's the name of that tool? I'm, I'm a, uh, feel free to put your questions in the comments. I'm going to read them over to Mitch. Uh, we got quite a few we got we to go over. But what, what's the uh, name of that tool? It's a microwave leak detector. Okay. I'm going to see if we got that. If not, I'm going to make sure we do. Okay. Because uh, this you is probably one of the most on important Amazon. things about microwave repair that I didn't even know of. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, you got it? So let's go on to questions. Uh, so uh, Appliance Inc. 
he, he, I guess when we were talking about, uh, I, thought, I said CYA, uh, he said, what does CMA mean? I guess cover my yes. automobile with quality insurance That's right. coverage. <laughs> it's co cover my automobile with, <laughs> with quality parts. Uh, uh, appliance, actually, uh, uh, I just said appliance. I'm an appliance guy. Yeah. Cover my appliance. That's, That's right. Means, with uh, proper coverage. <laughs> um, also, uh, here, you never knew is very important. Uh, I'm gonna see if we sell that tool. If not, I'm definitely gonna make sure we do. Uh, 63 Impala, what's up, brother? Long time customer. Uh, what does uh, what, what about cordless screwdrivers? The little low power, probably a little, you know, little $20 ones you get. $20 yeah. at Home Depot. Uh, Two dollars at Pirate Freight. Right. <laughs> no, they're not that deep. But okay, I so, love those things. Be honest. Well, you. Wait, let let you you brought up a good thing. Okay. Do you, do you go to Harbor Freight and you buy you buy the Harbor Freight tool? Number one, Harbor Harbor Freight has. I'm a I'm a I'm a member of Harbor Freight. I pay my thirty nine dollars every year and get specials. Right. Um, I don't buy my tools at Harbor Freight. Um, I buy. I may buy a screwdriver set or a or a miniature screwdriver set. Yeah, but you, know you to want get. to yeah. have quality tools. Um, there's nothing worse, and I'll tell you a perfect example. Um, one of the guys had bought a uh, uh, an opened end wrench from Harbor Freight. Well, the bolt was stuck, and literally, I ruined the 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 bolt head. Because it just slipped and, and cut, and the Harbor Freight tool wasn't good. <coughs> as you can tell, I'm a pretty big guy. Um, as far as cordless screwdrivers, um, I'll be honest with you. It's been so long so I, since I look at one of those little small... You're talking about the ones that have the... Uh, it, you get it in your hand, and, and it literally fits inside your hand. Like a, like a, a, like this, and then you mash the button, right? Is that what he's talking about? As far as a cordless screwdriver, you know, oh, little guys, I've got one here. Uh, you know, those little, like you know, cause I, I know when I did repair, I, I, I love those things, and you know, I'm a, I'm a fan of Harbor Freight because I feel we don't, you know, unlike like auto, auto, auto repair, yeah, uh, we don't need super heavy duty tools, you know, uh. But certain, you know, certain things I knew what to buy from there, certain things not to. But, uh, yeah, those little cordless screwdrivers, they're nice because I have like four of them and have different drill bits on each one. So I got to change drill bits. <laughs> right. Now, you're talking about the ones like you got. That's fine. That's a different that's a different style of what I'm talking about. Okay. But what I'm talking about is about probably 10 inches to, to a foot long not like yours um yours actually has a setting that you can adjust the torque in the in the screwdriver head right right yeah 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 that's the main thing is something that has that that torque setting so that you don't ream something out or or make it so tight that the next guy can't get through can't get it out um, oh yeah, yeah i've cursed out previous technicians in my head when I go yeah. to repair something and I see, <laughs> I see the, yeah. the uh, you know, things stripped out, uh, you know, <laughs> right. or, or, you know, you see technicians using a uh, high impact mm -hmm. and I'm like, man, that is so overkill. So overkill. Oh. Yep. Any, any other questions? Feel free to leave them in the comments. Ten inches long to a foot. This is uh, the drill. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll keep moving. Uh, and as it looks, uh, looking for that microwave uh, leak detector, as of right now, it looks like we do not have it, but stand by, right? Mm -hmm. So this is what Lean On Your Rep is all about. <laughs> and, and keep that in mind, too. If, uh, if, like, if you order a particular part on a regular basis and it's always on back order, or it, you, know, it, it, you buy it all and then it's, it's, you, know, you run out, Lean On Your Rep, let me know. We can stock inventory based off your needs. That's the whole point, right? So uh, just let me know that your needs. Uh, we, we do stock based off of volume and, you know, fast-moving parts. 
Um, but every once in a while, you know, I mean, I've done it for plenty of customers. Uh, they, they buy a lot of a particular part, and I'll make sure that warehouse in their area is stocked with that part, so they'll always have availability to it. All right, Mitch, I'm gone. No, well, no, go to, go to yeah. Smooth. He has a question. <laughs> oh, who, oh, there we go. Smooth. He typed, I have a question. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, okay. So, that's, oh, okay. so smooth isn't that smooth. So I should have read it before I posted that. So we're going to go ahead and block smooth. All right. So this is a basic schematic. Um, then on a microwave, like Reggie said, uh -oh. this is what scares people. I think Scott found it. Okay, because there are so many parts that are moving in in the microwave itself. So we actually have a basic schematic course. Um, go ahead and 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 lean on your rep um, because your rep knows that we have this next. Uh... Oh, see, there you go, Reggie. Yeah, Scott found it. Scott, you are the virtual training MVP. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something about Scott. Not to interrupt, but Scott flew down to for our GE training. Flew down. Uh, uh, he's an industry veteran. So, and that's, you know, it's, it's stuff like that speaks to the appliance community, uh, especially guys like Scott, man, where, uh, you know, we don't like, you know, be in this, we don't, we're not in this business for 10, 20 years and be like, oh, you know, I know everything. You don't have to teach me nothing. No, you got guys in this business 20, 30 years still committed to learning uh and scott is an example of that and brother i appreciate you going in and uh finding that part number uh and so yep it you know what reggie it's like my grandfather that. told me you're gonna look you're gonna learn some you should learn something every single day of your life right. if you don't you start dying yep keep your pencil sharp exactly so as I was going back to it, we have a basic schematic um, class that we're gonna we're gonna put on. Um, Reggie, help me out. It's two weeks, three weeks from today. Uh, let's look at the schedule. Hang on. <clears throat> Un momento, por favor. All right, we'll come right back to Mr. Screen. So what you basically do is just find out about our uh, training events. So you go to encompass.com, the main page, click on the training icon, you scroll down, and this will show you. So I threw uh, the uh, base appliance repair up here with the, in the, with the main training, but it has its own little section at the bottom. Um, but these things we got coming up next, uh, G refrigeration, uh, that's a two-part course. It's uh, also West Coast friendly for, for, for Corey's folks. <laughs> West Coast friendly. Uh, and right here, Appliance 101 has its own section. So wiring schematics is September 5th at 8 a.m. That's right. You don't have to make a choice between going out and making money or training. You got it nice and early enough where you just push your premise back a little bit uh, to, to, to be a part of it. So that wireless command is going to be hot. It's, it's going to be hot. All right. Let me... And so like, like you said, Reggie, that is, that's, that's one tool that everybody needs to keep in their toolbox. Um, go ahead and, and show that, that if, if you need a little schematic help, please, that's the reason I put this slide in here. So what do you think about this comment? I, I, I use a neon bulb to test the leak outside the microwave door and hold a single lead with pliers. Uh, that sounds, uh, that sounds I, a little blow up -y. I don't know. <laughs> I, I always, that worries me whenever you're talking about anything that we're holding a single lead with pliers. You always had the chance to slip off. Uh, yep. Drop it. You're, I'm getting old. Uh, my 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 grip is not what it used to be. Um, so that worries me. I I'd whole lots rather spend spend that twenty five dollars and check and 
and get a, a tool that's designed for it. Because the last thing you want to do is hurt yourself or someone else. Right. Where this whole this whole thing is safety. So also, if you are tuning in from Facebook, you have to allow uh, is, is, at the bottom is you got to give StreamYard permission to display your name. Uh, so we can see who you are. And this is Scott replying back. There we're turning 27 years. Wow. You can begin a cast like this. Yeah, and that's yeah, again, yeah, another feather this cat, man. This is a beginner class, the 27 year vet coming in. Hey, you always learn something, right? You yeah. can always learn something. Uh, it's funny. So I went to HVAC school to fine tune my appliance repair uh, skills because at the time there was no other training for appliance repair. And, uh, you know, HVAC kind of teaches a little bit of everything plumbing, electrical, uh, uh, steel systems. Uh, and it's funny, my instructor was like, he gets approached by people that's been doing HVAC for 30, 40 years saying, hey, you should go ahead and just give me a diploma. I've been doing this for 30 years. And he said, I can't because you wouldn't pass the test. <laughs> Meaning that yeah, they, they've been doing it their way, right? For so long, they wouldn't pass the test of, of formal training. So uh, yeah, definitely, definitely keep your pencil sharp. Uh, well, and we have someone else saying good morning from Facebook. Yeah. So uh, let me tell you, since we're going to talk about stories, I had a, a really good friend that um, called me up to do some work at a church. And I was like, brother, I'm really not the right guy. You need to call an electrician. I know basic electricity. I know enough that if I grab 110, it's going to hold me and 220 is going to throw me away. Um, so they they did. They hired a guy and he was an he was an older guy like me, um, reached down. He said, I've been doing this for 20 years, um, reached down and, and grabbed a, a wire and it killed him. Um, that's why I always, the, the comment that I made was safety first, please don't do anything that's going to, that you might get injured. If you don't think you're going to, you know enough to do it, don't do it. I mean, be honest with people. People, nine times out of ten, that person doesn't want to doesn't want you to do it if you're not if you're not confident with what you're doing. Um, so please, just just go on. So let's go to the next one. Can you can you tell me what Jacob said? Oh, he just gonna shout out to Scott. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're good. Okay. So here so what are some of the reasons that a microwave won't heat? Um, you know, to be to be honest with you, it can be anything from the door switches to a magnetron. So how do you where do you start? Do I start with the door switches? Do I go to the middle of the circuit and maybe check something that I think is is probably five out of ten? Um, check the diode. <coughs> then, uh, or do I go all the way other side and say it's something with magnetron? Once you become accustomed and work on microwaves a lot. You know, one of the things is a magnetron, a magnetron too will buzz just before it'll go out a lot of times. And you'll know, you know what? I need to discharge the capacitor and I need to check the mag magnetron. You may not get anything. You may you may open the thing up and and you need to look at the round and do a visual. Like I said, about four five out of ten times, it's gonna be a, a diode. So a lot of times you can look at a diode and it either smell, you can smell it that it's bad, or you can you can see it physically on the on the diode itself that it's bad. So there there are many reasons, but what you want to do is kind of I always try to start in the middle. Okay. So what what do you do? You know what? I verify that there's a no no heat situation. How how do you verify 
that there's a no heat switch situation. So, Reggie, I'm going to ask you a question. Do you guys carry the little LED lights that are about six inches long? You put them in the microwave. Whenever you mash the button, you don't have to have water now. And the, the lights will glow or flash telling you that the microwaves work. I'm sorry, uh, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. Yeah, uh, it might be a job for Scott. I mean, he seems to be able to find my parts better than I can. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, I'll so, have to look because part numbers fine. usually helps. But so, uh, what I was getting at was there's one of two ways to check it. You can you can put, um, you know, about 14 ounces of water in a cup in a, in a, in a um, beaker or a cup or something. I used to carry a uh, a measuring chip cup <coughs> in my truck because that's just what I wanted to do. You like this bulb you talking about? You got an electric light? Like no. This? No. This is specifically made to check a microwave. Oh, okay. Hey, Scott, so, you're up. <laughs> yeah. Check. Let me do so some research. That, that's maybe something you want to look at also because they they you do sell those. Um, so what I do is I, I verify the no heat situation. So I put something in the microwave. I mean, you can put a baked potato in the microwave <coughs> as long as you score it and, and poke holes in it and turn it on to see if it's, it's heating. Um, but you want to make sure that you want to verify that the unit is not heating. Okay. After you verify that the unit's not heating, you can you need to remove the cover. Whenever you remove the cover, there are several um, Torx bits that had that are in that specialty toolkit that you're going to need. Um, so you're going to put that specialty Torx bit in. That's the reason I use my personal. I just use a a, a, a handheld screwdriver with an insert so that I can put my Torx head in there, uh, undo them. There's usually two screws on the float on the side. <coughs> uh, one, two screws on both sides. And then there's somewhere between six and 10 screws on the back. Um, unlike some of the dryers, it, at least it, it's easier for that. So you're going to remove that cover. The next thing that you're going to do is you're going to discharge the capacitor. I am going to show you how to discharge the capacitor a little on a couple of a couple of slides later. Okay. Once I un once I have um, discharged the capacitor, I'm going to well first you're going to unplug the power cord. I'm sorry. Unplug the power cord. And then you discharge the capacitor. Um, I put those in incorrectly, and I apologize about that. So you're going to unplug the power. Unplug the power. You're going to discharge the capacitor. You're going to once you discharge that capacitor, you're going to verify the voltage to the transformer. That's the easiest way to do it. What you're going to pull one of the we're going to go through that a little bit later also. Those are all contained in the, in the slides to follow. Okay. No voltage determines an issue with the low voltage side. Check the door switches, overload, and wiring. Um, if you have the 120 volts, the issues with your high side, check the transformers, the capacitor, the diode, and the magnetron. Now, if you've been doing this for a while, you probably... Um, I always, like I said, always, I checked the diode. The first thing that I went to was the diode because a lot of, most of the time the diode will tell me something. Um, so the one thing you need to remember is just because the diode is bad, what else is bad? So you still need to check to make sure that there's nothing else that, that is, that has malfunctioned in this unit. Um, you want to repair the issue. You want to reinstall the cover. Well, you don't. 
always repair the issue, perform a leak check while verifying the proper operation of the unit, and then I reinstall the cover. Okay. How do I check the high voltage from the transform to the magnetron? Well, that one is in the wrong spot. So the first, the question is, how do I discharge the capacitor? Because that's the next thing that it tells you to do is to discharge the capacitor. So the way I did it, the way that I do it is I use a pair of insulated pliers, <coughs> needle nose pliers. I put them between the two, <coughs> excuse me, you, I put them between the two um, leads right there and you're going to, you're going to hear a pop. Okay. If it has a pop, if you, if it literally had a charge and it didn't bleed off, it will pop. And I mean, it may, you need to kind of be aware that it's going to pop because the last thing that you want to do is to go into a customer's home, do that. And then it pops and the customer goes freaks out. Because we all know that you got that customer that sits right there over your shoulder. Um, I call I call her the Jiminy Cricket um, because they they want to see exactly what you're doing. So you're gonna once you do this, you're either gonna get a pop or you're not gonna get a pop. If you get a pop and you had actually touched it before the capacitor leaked out, you're gonna the you're gonna you could have you could have gotten a severe burn. Okay. So in checking the capacitor, okay, we're going to, if you look at here, there are, there are, there, this, the red arrow shows you exactly how many microfarads there are. This one shows one, and then it shows you that there's a plus or minus variant that goes with that. So what you're going to do is you're going to set your multimeter to capacitance. Okay. You're going to rotate it around. You're going to do that. And then you're going to take and place the meter leads <coughs> on each set of capacitance terminals. You take a reading from the term from the first set of, of terminals. Okay. Then you're going to go from one side, you take and, and go from one side of the terminal to the case current, to the case. Then you're going to take the other, go to the other side and check it <coughs> to ground. Okay. If you get a reading and you've checked it, that means you've, you've grant that capacitor is grounded and you're going to, you're going to replace that capacitor. Okay. Um, like I said, if you're getting a reading, it should be one point one plus or minus the three percent variant for this capacitor. If it's higher than three percent, or if it's lower than three <coughs> percent, you need to replace the capacitor. I apologize, guys. I'm coming. I'm just getting over a, a hacking cough. Okay, I asked for the model number. Um, Reggie, you're going to have to help me out. I asked for the model number and age. And so he basically saying when he approaches a customer, uh, yeah. he asked for the model number and age first, I guess, over the phone. Yeah. Uh, to make to see if it's worth replacing. Mean, that's, that's the question. That's always a question with microwaves and dishwashers, yeah. right? Um, but I would You're think, right. you know, yeah, but hey, people, that's, people they, they, you know, depends on the customer, but long, if it's less than the price of a new one, including installation, that's the one thing with microwaves and dishwashers that has to be factored in, right? You will quickly be like, oh, I was going down to Walmart and get another microwave for 200 bucks. Okay. It's going to cost another 250 to get it installed, <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. Well, but, but if we're talking about an over the counter, an over the counter microwave, most most homeowners don't want to do that. Um, right. If we're talking about one that sits on a countertop, you're exactly right. I mean, honestly, if I've 
if I if I've got a it's called magic lights. Yeah, so uh appreciate your E, 63 Impala. At this point, man, I'm just gonna take off my uniform and give it to uh Scott and, and uh 63 Impala. <laughs> See that's, that's see that's but you know what they're they're gonna be on our website more than I am right because they're ordering yeah. every day. You're exactly so I, right. Actually, that makes me proud. Appreciate y'all. We got, we got some strong customers. <laughs> yep, yeah. you're exactly right. That's the part number. Oh, there it is, right there. Yeah. Well, right now. Yep. Boom. Okay. They, they, we need to restock some of them though. We're gonna get some more some more in. Yeah, that light bulb's eight bucks. There you go. Okay, so moving on, if there's no more questions, <coughs> here's a perfect example. See the diode right here? See how it's split? It tells me the diode's not any good. Well, if the diode looks okay and I don't get any smell from the diode, uh, I'm I'm going to have to check it. So exactly how do I check a diode? So the easiest way to check a diode is is to go ahead and and check that diode um, for the continuity <coughs> because a diode only runs one way. Okay? It will only show continuity in one direction. If you flip it over and it shows continuity, you got a bad diode. And you need to replace it. If it's if if you um if you go from one terminal to the other and it and you get you got a bad you got a bad diode, replace it. So um move on. So let's let's talk about checking the high voltage transformer. This is where people start to get a little scared. Um, so whenever I check the high voltage transformer, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do everything that I've done before, um, just to make sure that that it's it um, make sure that there's no spark in the capacitor. I'm going to remove the terminals, and I'm going to check the primary side. Does everybody know what the primary side is? Which one the primary side is? If you look at a transformer, okay, the primary side will have the larger gauge wire that runs around the transformer. Okay? So you're going to set your multimeter to 200 ohms. <clears throat> you're gonna place the terminals. Your your you're gonna place your leads on both terminals, okay? And you should read somewhere between 0.5 and 1.5. Should not be anything more than two. It, you should never get it a two or above, okay? Then after you do that, you're gonna turn the meter to the highest ohm setting. You're going to check from one side to ground. And then you're going to check from the other side to ground. So most transformers have a coating. They all have a coating. But if you look on the very side of the transformer, <coughs> if you were to check it and not eat the um, move, get the... Um, what I do is scratch it. I'm not going to lie to you. I take a, um, I always carry a pocket knife. I take my pocket knife and I scratch onto the very side of the, of the transformer so that I can get rid of the coating. Because if you don't get rid of the coating, it's not, you're not going to be getting a true reading. So you scratch the casing and you go from one side to ground, which is on your, uh, one of the leads to the ground that you've created then you're going to go from the other lead to the ground to your to your that you've just created if you get a reading on any of those it needs to be replaced <coughs> okay 
if you don't get a reading, what you're going to do is you're going to move around to the other side of the primary windings. Okay. You're going to go to the secondary windings. Those are going to be denoted by the thin. It's a whole lot thinner wire. Um, usually those actually will, uh, uh, the secondary windings is the high voltage. Um, so we're going to check the same thing. We're going to check from terminal to ground, which is you use the same ground that you had on your previous, um, where you were checking, <coughs> excuse me, the primary side. So you're going to keep checking those, those to make sure that the same thing, that you're not grounded somewhere. Okay. If you're not reading anything on either one of those, you're going to do the same thing that you did. Um, there's a little, there's, there's two wires that come out of that transformer that are, that have you, an insulated coating on them. Um, some people have a, a armor flex, somebody, some people just coat it, um, depending on which manufacturer made the, the transformer. So you just want to do the same thing and check it to ground. <coughs> if you get, if you get, um, if you get a reading of uh, about the same thing, um, you're gonna the 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 point five to one point five. Your your things your um, transformer is good, and you're gonna have to go to the next section. Um, so you've now verified that the diode is good. You verified that the transformer is good. <coughs> Excuse me. You're gonna you verified. You verified the capacitor is good, so there's only other one one other place that that you can go to check. Um, and that's the magnetron. Okay, so the magnetron has a fuse on the magnetron. If you see it, it's on the very top there, and that that fuse could actually cause your problems. Um, most of the time I have, I very, very rarely saw that to go bad. I mean, if you do them every day, yeah, you're going to see it. If you don't, then you're probably, you still need to check it though. And the only thing you're going to do that, do with that is you're going to check for continuity. And if you've got continuity, that fuse is good. If you're, if you if you uh, get down and you need to you need to check the magnetron, you're going to remove the two wires that are on the bottom there. Um, you're going to take that and you're going to check from one side to ground, one to the cat to the uh, case of the magnetron. You're going to check from the other side of the case to the magnetron. To make sure that you're not you don't have a grounded magnetron. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, so if you take the the wire, once you do that, you take both wire both leads, put them on the the magnetron leads that, that come out of the magnetron. You're gonna check. You're gonna see if you're getting any ohms readings. Um, if you get a reading between zero and 0.5 ohms it has continuity so you you know that you know that um you know that the magnetron is good now if you do all of your chat testings and you've gone through and you've verified that everything else in the microwave works properly you still could have a bad magnetron i have I had one that just drove me crazy and come to find out there was something in a magnetron that was bad. Now I'm going to caution you. There are tools out there that, uh, that says that say that they, you can check your voltage to the magnetron with everything plugged in <coughs> and and running never ever on any circumstance 
do something like that. I had a, a, a young guy that, that just started. And he decided that that was the problem and he was going to check it with one of these meters. It literally blew him through the wall. And he was out of work for nine months and still wasn't the same the same young man that there was whenever he, whenever I hired him. Um, so please, please don't check anything on the high voltage side with the unit running. Now, does anybody have any questions? See, I told you, Reggie, it was going to be about an hour and a half. Uh, I've got a question about blowing, getting blown through the wall. Yep. <laughs> that, that definitely caught my attention. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, you know, some, some things you only get one, one opportunity to get it right. Yeah. Uh, and that is definitely, uh, one of the, um, ah. nut, another nugget from Mitch. <laughs> Uh, in this class, uh, yeah, this this safety first, right? You're right. And that's why I never tinker with microwaves. So, like, without formal training, uh, in certain things, you only get one chance to get it right. And you know what? I'm looking at this comment, and that's exactly right. There is a thermal fuse <coughs> that's mounted on the microwave somewhere. You're going to have to actually get your manual and find out where that thermal fuse is. Um, it's just like the thermal fuse on an oven. Um, and I'm go I'm thank you for bringing that up. I had that in my presentation, and somehow it, it came out. It got removed. Sure. Um, <laughs> so yeah. So there is a there is a thermal fuse that's somewhere on that on that oven. You're going to. It's very similar to the thermal fuse that's um, that's on the microwave. I mean, on the on the magnetron. It's somewhere on the oven, but you need to find out first where it's at. Once you do that, you're going to have to check that <clears throat> because that person is exactly right. A lot of times, whenever I've seen it happen, it's usually whenever the customer used something that that had an excessive amount of steam and it caused it to, to trigger the fuse. But that also, since we're, since we're right here at the end, um, the, the, and the person that was, I don't remember who it was, but they said about the model number and how old the microwave was. The, the customer is your, is your value, valuable asset. Ask them, ask them what they were cooking whenever it went bad. <coughs> You're going to have to pardon me. Um, ask them. Uh, microwave. I'm, I'm, I'm putting the part numbers in the, in the description. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, ask the customer, what were you cooking? You know, what happened? What happened? What was what was going on whenever you whenever the microwave stopped working? Um, that'll also kind of help you where to look, where to stop, where to where to start. I mean, if they tell you that they were they were cooking something, and they as soon as they closed the door, it quit. You may want to look at a uh, you may want to look at the at the um, switches in the door. The door switches are not are there's there's two different kinds of door switches in the, in the mic, in the microwave, um, doors. It's a normally open and a normally closed switch. Um, usually they're single pole, single throw. Um, I have seen a couple that were, uh, single pole, double throw. Again, that is in, uh, that's in the next class that we're going to, that we're going to go over. Um, we touch on the microwave portion of it. Um, that class is going to be longer than this class was. It'll be probably somewhere around two to two and a half hours. 
So, does anybody have any questions? Type them in the in the comments, please. So, while we wait for questions, uh, for anyone who kind of came in late and wondering who this guy is behind me, <laughs> who's that lurking in the background? Uh, that's Corey, man. He, uh, so you guys always, you know, always get questions. Who, hey, who's my rep? Who's my rep in my, in my area? Well, if you are on the West Coast, Corey is your guy. Uh, I got his information. Hang on, I'm going to scroll up and uh, put his information in again. So this is his digits. Boom. Uh, call, text Corey. Lean on your rep. Uh, this is email, email Corey, lean on your rep, and that's his name if you want to stalk him on social media. <laughs> um, also, uh, if you want to know what's next, right? Hang on, I'm talking before I'm ready. Hang on. All right, so you want to know what's next, uh, you enjoyed this class, uh, go to encompass.com, the main page. Click on Training Center, scroll down, and you will see the next classes we have coming up. Uh, we've got oops, wrong thing. Uh, September 8th, we got GE Refrigeration. And so it'll be a, a week of learning. So on the 5th, so that's Tuesday, uh, yeah, let, me see, let me look at my calendar. Is that next Tuesday? No, that's going to be in two weeks. Week so, uh, not next Tuesday, the one after will be wiring schematics. So, y'all got two weeks to prepare for that. And then that uh, Friday, you have GE refrigeration, right? So, they kind of go hand to hand. Uh, so, and you look at what's coming soon, our schedule here. Uh, Appliance 101, this is a new curriculum uh, taught by the man, the myth, the legend, Mitch Williams, my twin brother. Uh, and uh, look for comments. Okay. Uh, yeah, so in, in the registration is open for these classes. So go ahead and register. You'll get reminders of when it's uh, when a class is coming up. And I always come back to the page. Also, if somehow... You do not have an Encompass account. It's not too late to save your business. <laughs> you can lean on your rep. I'm gonna put uh, a link in the chat. Uh, I know some some uh, plat. This is streaming on multi platforms, so some platforms may not be able to see the comments. But uh, my number is scrolling across the screen. My number and my email address. Uh, so you can contact me if you have questions uh, about this industry, because um, you know I, I do learn a little something visiting uh, you know 30 of y'all uh, a week. Uh, if you want to sign up for a new account, uh, it's there. Link is in the description, and also. If you're on the West Coast, that's the guy. Hit up, Corey. Uh, what else you got, Mitch? Uh, that's it. Um, the only thing that I, the only thing I'd like to know, oh, there's 26. Um, the only thing I would like to know is, d did I cover what everybody needed covered? Um, do you, do you need? Should I have covered something else? Um, should I have added something, taken something away? Um, I'm all about trying to make sure that you get what you need to do your job. So I, I do got a question. So when I was looking online for that, that magic light bulb before uh, um, uh, 63 Impala posted the part number, mm -hmm. uh, I saw some people putting actual light bulbs in microwaves. Is that a thing? <laughs> I had to ask. Sounds silly. I would never recommend putting a micro, uh, light bulb in a microwave. Right. Yeah. So I saw some stuff online where people were doing that. I'm like, that doesn't look 
Right. Yeah. Uh, I, you, you can. I mean, there's a there. Your your microwave has a light bulb in it, <coughs> but I still. I no don't. don't yeah, they, do they literally put it in a bowl and yep. set it in the middle of the microwave. Yep. I know. So again, that's one of the experiments you, you, you get. You know, you find out the results once, right? Right. <laughs> you never know because you have to remember what does a microwave do? It uses microwaves to heat heat things. Yeah, so, it rubs the, the molecules together. Yeah, uh, that produces heat. The, the yep. water molecules. And if you uh, put the wrong kind of light bulb in there, guess what happens? What happens when you put tin foil in a microwave? A light show. Yeah, a light show. Right? You will oh, melt the microwave. If you put the wrong kind of light bulb in there and you just throw it in there and and hope for the best, <coughs> as my as my other grandfather used to say, you done bought something you can't eat. Right. Right. Awesome. And and those little mini light bulbs, how much were they? Uh, eight dollars. Yeah, for the uh, the tester one. Right. So why wouldn't I just, as a technician, I have the obligation to to make sure that I'm doing things that are safe, that keeps the customer safe, me safe. Why would I not spend eight dollars? I mean, basically, if you go to Starbucks, which I don't. Because I don't like Starbucks. But uh, excuse me? Uh, we're in the broadcast right now. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm, I'm Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah, yeah, I'm a Dunkin' <laughs> fan too. They're, they're, yeah, yeah. Dunkin's everywhere. Uh, Starbucks is just the lines are crazy. <laughs> All right. So, does anybody have any questions? Question, I'm guessing question, no. question, question, question. I know there's a question out there nobody's asking. What is easy stock? <laughs> what is what? Easy stock. That's easy right. stock is your free appliance parts management app. Yeah, so I gotta I didn't even bring my glasses. I gotta read these comments before I post them. I gotta read a comment. Okay, this looks this looks this looks cool. <laughs> there we go. Uh, if I was telling a new technician, wait, if I was telling a new tech, I would expect that person to use a second man to remove to remove to access so the stove doesn't get damaged. Same with using a moving blanket to protect the stove. Correct. That's for for an OTR. You're exactly right. If it's a countertop microwave, most of those are, are under 40 pounds. Right. And you know, I was having a conversation yesterday, too, uh, on the, so you have an over-the-counter microwave, and then you have a uh, uh, cooktop with the glass, the oven, yeah. stove. Uh, sorry, I don't know the technical term for it. <laughs> the glass top, right? Yeah. I would say... Especially for you landlords out there, uh, nine times out of ten, the tenant said, "Oh, it just broke." No, some probably fell out of that microwave and smashed <laughs> that glass. Um, so yeah, we, we and we do provide those parts. Um, okay, so so Brandon, to answer your question, that is that is the proper way to check a magnetron. Um, it actually, uh, you can go on YouTube. Um, there are a lot of videos um, that that you can go and look at. They may be a little bit different, but that's usually the way that they'll tell you to check a magnetron. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <coughs> Right, technicians, this is the time to ask. Okay, you know, so, back in the day, most of us we had like you know YouTube to ask questions to, and not yeah. a live experience uh, instructor. Uh, so definitely take advantage of this opportunity. Ask Mitch anything, any questions you may have. Okay, so 
Impala, Impala rack dude. So you're talking about microwave doesn't pay enough for a second man. Um, you got to have a system. Ooh, that's a good, good point. There are systems out there that can help you remove the microwave. Um, you're exactly right. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah your customers look at you too like, uh, you ain't bring no help with you? Uh, remember I was charging you like 200 bucks? <laughs> right. Where in that could I fit another body? <laughs> right. <laughs> and, but but he's right. I mean, yeah. microwave, microwaves at this time, I mean, they're, they've come down. You got to remember whenever I first started was a uh was a an amana radar range was the first microwave and my dad bought one for my mom and all they did was heat coffee in it um <laughs> but that thing was like a thousand bucks you you could you you had the the thing to be able to play play around with the with what you charged i mean you're right there is there there is a there is a system they make different systems out there <clears throat> but at the same time uh facebook user is exactly right i mean the the one for a a a linton a ge a, a whirlpool a a um electrolux they all come off the wall differently so you have to be very careful. I mean, I have to. I hate to say this, but I used the last job that I had was with um, Electrolux, otherwise known as Frigidaire, um, and our our system was so easy. I mean, you could literally one man could take it take it off the wall if you had protection on the on the stove. Um, and usually with protection, um, one of the things that I carried was a blanket. The other thing, if I'm going to do a, a microwave, um, an OTR microwave, the other thing that I carried was was foam. Um, you can buy, you can usually find. <coughs> I'll give you a per. I and I hate to say this, but I I have been known to pull over to the side of the road because I saw a couch cushion that was. Uh, that was on the side of the road. I've been known to pull over, take that couch cushion, cut it, put put the rest of it in my truck, um, and then take the take the, everything else and put it in the trash can in my truck. Because yeah. there's a perfect example of a foam rubber that gives you a little uh, stability. Yeah, I, I think uh, we all developed that radar <laughs> yeah. uh, as a flipper. Uh, yeah, I, I've had my truck on two wheels plenty of times, turning corners, uh, driving past and seeing something, seeing some uh, big metal, white metal structure on the on the curb. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, and then one of the reasons why too, I never leave home without my truck because like, you know, yeah. I mean, I, I've got a little Prius I take on the road with me, but uh, every once in a while I am tempted to throw a washing machine on the roof of it. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I, I found a, uh, yeah, I had a, I found a uh, lottery. Ladder on the side of the road, a six foot brand new ladder. Lot ladder. I'll spit it out in a minute. And I, I turned around and went and got it. I knew it was a hundred and nine dollars because I just bought one. Yep. So, so it, also what I'm showing on the screen here is uh, Encompass.com. Uh, one of the unique things about using Encompass uh, in our website, uh, very intuitive, and you've got these 360 photos, right? So when people lean on a rep before we had these, they was like, hey, man, I need to see the plug on that. I'm not sure if it's the right part or not. So here are the 360 photos. You can kind of just, you know, it's very useful to look at the plugs and inspect the part and to make sure you got the right part, right? So uh, that definitely saves you time and money um, on your repairs, verifying you have the right part. And these 360 photos, nice thing about it is this, this is something – uh, we got from the manufacturers. Most suppliers they get the part pictures and stuff from manufacturers uh, data, uh, and and there lies some mistakes, right? Well, these parts are actually taken out of the box. We have an equip we have the equipment and personnel here. Take them out of the box, and they take pictures on them and put them directly uh, on the website. 
so they're very, very, uh, you know, nobody's perfect, but it makes a mistake, mistake proof. All right, man. I think it's, it's time for uh, everybody to get back to work. <laughs> yeah. Let's see uh, some comments we have. Hang on one second. Thank you, Facebook user. Okay. Boom. Okay, so there is my email address. If I can help you in any way, please. Go ahead and, and send me an email. If any questions for Mitch, shoot him an email. Uh, any questions for your rep, my name, information is scrolling. If you are on the West Coast, look at this guy. Look at that, look at that beard game on him. Look, 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 look at the beard game. I mean, I'm, I'm going to hide my, my little beard starter kit, man. Look at this Look at this guy's beard, man. I mean, you know, that's, that's, that's a manly beard. <laughs> Now, if you're not buying parts from this guy based off the beard game, I don't, I don't understand what you're doing, man. I don't know what's going on out there. Uh, but, yeah, it's been fun, Mitch. Uh, man, I'm looking forward to that schematics class. Uh, it's it's, it's going to be something else that's going to be necessary. I think that's going to be huge. Uh, usually our SEAL systems classes are our uh, biggest attended classes, but I think the schematics it, it may rival it. Uh, because uh, that, that this appliance repair one on one. Yeah. Uh, all right. Any last minute comments? Put it in. If not, we are going to close this out. Because uh, me and Corey going to go knock on some doors and, and see some of you fine folks out there in the appliance community. Uh, Mitch is going to start preparing for his next class. He's got two whole weeks. Uh, and also, Mitch going to be going to roll. To, hey, hey y'all, stay tuned, man. My twin brother, Mitch. Uh, he's going to, uh, you're yeah, going to see more of him uh, on the road and virtually. Uh, so definitely, definitely give us your feedback. Let us know what you want to see uh, as far as technical training. I think we have a lot of the, the, the stuff covered, but hey, nobody's perfect and none of us is better than all of us. Uh, so any parting words, Mitch? No. Just right. thank you guys for, for your time. I really appreciate it. And thank you. And uh, again, I am, my name is Reggie Williams. This is Corey. Uh, we are your Encompass reps. If you have any questions, if you want a new account, uh, if you need more work, if uh, whatever you need to make you successful, there's only one thing you need to do. L-O-I-R. Lean on your reps. We'll see y'all. Now y'all go fix something.